The Panama Canal connects two of the world's biggest oceans, and it's suffering from a strange problem. It's running out of water. That's a big deal, because billions of dollars in global trade and almost half of all US sea freight passes through here every year. The lack of water is reducing the number of ships which can pass through each day, and that's creating an enormous traffic jam. If you're the unlucky captain of one of these ships, then you have three options. Take a very long detour, pay big bucks for priority passage, or join the back of the queue. Anyone you choose is going to push up the price of whatever you're carrying. But why is this happening? The Panama Canal is a triumph of engineering which helped launch the US as a global power over a century ago. But its ingenious design has also left it vulnerable to a very modern problem. Climate change has been reducing the rainfall the canal relies on for much of the last decades, and it's only getting worse. A plan is in place which could fix the problem, but will it be completed before the droughts derail the global supply chain and a huge part of Panama's economy dries up? This is the race to save the Panama Canal. It's hard to overstate the importance of the Panama Canal to the global supply chain. 6% of the world's shipping passes through this 82 km passage. And if you're on the east coast of the US, there's a good chance that whatever you're watching this on has sailed through it. It's so important that many container ships are classified after which part of the canal they can fit through. And by sneaking through here, they can avoid the 20,000 km trip around one of the most dangerous stretches of water in the world. Now, looking at it on a map, it seems perfectly logical to create a canal here. But the ground conditions mean building it was anything but straightforward. Its ingenious design was only arrived at after a disastrous failed attempt which claimed the lives of tens of thousands of workers and destroyed the careers of two of France's most famous engineers. In 1869, Ferdinand de Lesseps completed work on the Suez Canal, a huge achievement that made him a household name in France. Then, in 1880, he began work on its follow-up act in Panama. De Lesseps planned to dig a huge canal, just as he had done at Suez, which would allow ships to sail through at sea level. But Panama's tropical jungle is a far cry from the Egyptian desert. While the Isthmus was chosen for its low elevation, it's still one of the hilliest areas of Central America. Most of the soil in the canal zone is composed of soft, crumbly clay, which becomes even more unstable when wet. But late in his career, and riding on his earliest success, De La Sepse's confidence had gotten the better of him, and he insisted on a sea level design despite the clear problems it posed. Sure enough, construction ran into problems almost immediately with the excavation of this, the Culebra Cut. De La Sepse wanted the canal to be as steep and narrow as possible to keep work to a minimum, but constant landslides required the team to keep widening the trench to create a more stable bank. This is the Culebra Cut when it was eventually abandoned in 1889, and this is how it appeared after it was successfully completed in 1914. To make matters worse, the wet conditions destroyed the primitive steam shovels by causing them to rust. But worst of all, there were tropical diseases which tore through the workforce, killing labourers and chief engineers alike. The excavation of this short stretch of canal was such a disaster that it swallowed up 280 million US dollars, bankrupted the project, and cost the lives of 22,000 people. It caused such a scandal back in France that De La Sepse and other engineers, including Gustave Eiffel, yes, that Eiffel, were put on trial, fined, and even ordered to serve jail time. The canal then sat abandoned until 1904 when it was picked up by an American expedition, and this is what they built. To avoid the seemingly impossible task of digging through unsuitable soil, the US came up with the ingenious idea of raising the canal over the land. Three sets of locks were constructed at either end, which raised ships 26 meters above sea level. In between this, the Culebra Cuts was finally completed, and a dam was created across the Chagres River, creating a huge artificial lake. Using new machinery and taking advantage of modern breakthroughs in tropical medicine, 
The canal was completed in 10 years. It was seen as an incredible triumph for an emerging world power. Not only did it create a new shipping route across the continent, it also contained the largest dam and artificial lake in the world. Since its opening, the canal has been crucial to global trade. And in 2010, the one millionth ship passed through its locks. But since then, the canals hit some problems. A massive drought caused the authorities to declare a state of emergency and limit the size of ships allowed to pass through it. The ingenious design which bypassed the soft terrain has also become the canal's Achilles heel. It takes nearly 200 million litres of water to pass a ship through one of the locks. The newest set of locks are able to recapture about 60% of that, but the canal mainly relies on the rainy season between May and December to top up water levels. But in 2015, the rainy season was the driest in over a century. That was caused by El Nino, a weather phenomenon which affects Central and South America, causing rain in some areas and droughts in others. El Niños occur every few years, but climatologists claim this one was particularly bad because of climate change, and they warned they'd become more frequent and more severe in the future, and that's exactly what happened. 2023 saw the longest prolonged dry spell in the canal's history. Up to 40 ships are capable of crossing the passage every day, but in November last year that number was slashed to 24, and by February it's likely to drop even lower. That's all leading to a massive traffic jam. Last August, there were 160 ships queuing to pass through the canal. And those that are passing through aren't sailing at full capacity. The largest class of ships, the Neo Panamax containers, are carrying 40% less cargo, so they sit higher in the shallow water. While most passages are booked in advance, the canal authorities reserve some slots which are auctioned off to the highest bidder. In November last year, a tanker carrying liquefied natural gas paid nearly $4 million on top of the usual $400,000 sailing fee just to skip the queue. So what are engineers doing to get the canal back to capacity? In September last year, the canal authorities gave their backing to a plan to create a new reservoir for the canal. The scheme was first devised in the late 90s and involves creating an artificial lake by damming the Indio River. Fresh water would then be supplied to Lake Gatton by an 8km tunnel. But it's not done yet. A 2006 law which allowed the expansion of the canal's locks banned the canal's authority from constructing any more reservoirs. For the Indio River plan to go ahead, that law would have to be overturned. And that won't happen without a fight. Demonstrators opposing a controversial mining contract given to a Canadian company that critics say will put Panama's environment and water supply at risk. These protests have rocked Panama for months, and any new reservoir is certain to be met with similar opposition. But while Panama struggles to come up with solutions, elsewhere, long-forgotten schemes that could bypass the canal entirely are attracting attention. In May, Nicaragua's foreign minister talked up the possibility of a partnership with Belarus to build a canal across his country. This route was originally looked at by the US in the 1900s, but abandoned in favour of the shorter option in Panama. In 2022, Florida-based company Zergotran launched an attempt to build a 130km tunnel in neighbouring Colombia, which would transport shipping containers coast to coast on maglev trains in just 30 minutes. But the strongest challenger to the canal's crown is Mexico's interoceanic corridor, which is already under construction. When completed, it'll ferry freight and passengers 300 kilometers via road and rail links. Just like the Nicaraguan canal, this isn't exactly new either. A railway first opened here in 1907, but was run out of business when the Panama Canal opened seven years later. When freight services began again in September 23, it was hoped they would have the upper hand this time around. It'll be years until we can say for certain what's going to happen to the canal or trade in this part of the world. Whether the Panama Canal retains its dominance in the global supply chain or just becomes one of many options remains to be seen. But if that does come to pass, then the golden age of one of the greatest engineering projects in the world will be firmly in the past. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. 
And if you enjoyed this video and you're bored to tears stuck in that massive queue of ships down in Panama, why not subscribe to the B1M?